All right, thank you for joining our Wednesday night Bible class tonight. And uh, remember, Sunday we'll be back together uh, on our normal schedule. So uh, jot that down on your calendar. Make sure that you're ready for that. And we're going to continue to post stuff online. Now, remember, I sent out an email saying that we're going to try to live stream soon. And we're in the process of getting that all situated. So make sure that you're watching emails for that to come out. But unfortunately, you know, that takes some time to get just right. So we're not going to be doing that this upcoming weekend, but we're going to work on trying to get it done as quickly as possible. So bear with us while we get that process figured out. And again, thank you for being here uh, in our virtual Bible class tonight. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday and uh, thank you so much for your participation. I know that this has been a challenging time for every person. And so uh, thank you so much. Tonight, we're going to study a passage that I hope will leave you encouraged and uplifted and kind of ready to tackle tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be studying out of Philippians chapter four. So I'm going to share my screen with you, and uh, we're going to study out of that passage. As you're maybe getting your Bibles there um, or you're uh, getting yourself ready for us to study God's word, let's go to God in prayer together, and uh, we'll get things working in the right direction uh, from here on. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for our blessed uh, hope that we have in you, uh, the salvation we have in Jesus. Help us to always remember those things, and thank you for our ultimate uh, understanding of you because of your word. Help us to always search it to find more. Help us to be encouraged tonight as we study. Be with everyone who's suffering and struggling, uh, those who are dealing with different things at this time. I pray that you be with each one of them. Uh, we pray all this through Jesus. Amen. All right, Philippians chapter 4, a passage that we're probably all familiar with, at least verse 13, and you can see verse 13 here on the screen. Uh, Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through him. Some translations use uh, the actual word Christ there. I can do all things through him or through Christ who strengthens me. Let me increase our size here for a minute. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What does this passage mean? To us. You know, there, there have been times in this year, and will come in the future if the Lord wills, that we will feel as if we are lacking strength. Uh, we feel like we can't do it on our own. Sometimes we have this great surge of, I can handle it, I've got a hold of life, I can take care of things, and then other times, you know, we feel like, I, I don't know if I have the strength to endure this. I don't know if I have the ability to go through this. And uh, Paul's situation was no different. Paul had been through many things, but Paul said he could do those things that he was having to deal with, he could endure them through Christ because Christ gave him strength. So let's read this passage right here, Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 13, and we're going to offer some thoughts about it. All right, Philippians chapter 4, I've got it highlighted here, and I'm going to be reading it. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking in of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. How can you and I develop this attitude that Paul had, that even in the midst of difficult circumstances, in fact, Paul says, in whatever situation I am, I have learned the secret, he says, of facing plenty and hunger, abundance, and need. I am not speaking of being in need, verse 11. I have learned in whatever situation I am in, in any and every circumstance, verse 12, to be content, because I can do all things. I can endure these things through Christ who strengthens me. Just like every other passage, this passage should be viewed in its context. Now, here in verse 10, we learn that the people of Philippi really wanted to help and find a way to serve Paul. Uh, that's a good attitude I think I could learn from every day, and maybe you could as well. You know, sometimes it's easy for us to constantly be look at, looking for circumstances to serve ourselves. What can I best do for me here? How can I best get myself ahead, but that's not the mentality of the Philippians. The, the people of Philippi, he says, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned 
for me, but you didn't have opportunity. He said, you know, at one point you were concerned, but there wasn't an opportunity. I'm, I'm thankful now that you've revived your concern. You know, as Christians, we should can be concerned about other people. And that's kind of the contextual situation here in the book of Philippi, uh, book of Philippians written to the people at Philippi. Now, remember in this book, Paul was in prison and uh, you and I studied this in a series of lessons not long ago, talking about how Paul had been in prison and yet he was still finding great joy. In fact, Philippians is the joy book of the New Testament. But this book has to be seen in its context. They were eager for an opportunity to serve. How often could it be said that you and I are eager for an opportunity to serve? Paul had learned to accept in verse 11, whatever situation and whatever state of life he found himself in. Verse 11, not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I've learned in whatever situation I am in to be content. Now he's saying, you've revived your concern for me. There wasn't a need before, but you know, he, he may have been implying that there was a need, but Paul clears that up in verse 11. He says, I'm not speaking of being in need. I'm not actually in need. And why is that, Paul? Why are you not in need? He says, for I have learned in whatever situation I'm in to be content. Paul's not saying that he had no need. He's saying that no matter the situation, even if he was in need, he's learned to be content with whatever he has. Whatever lot life throws towards us, whatever situation we find ourselves in, we could learn from Paul here. I often look at these passages and I ask myself, do I have this attitude or am I developing this attitude to always be concerned for others or in this passage to speak my life uh, about my life in such a way that I'm content regardless of what circumstances fall into my lap. Verse 12, Paul knew how to make the most of life, whether it was him being full or hungry. He says he can endure. Verse 12, I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. He's familiar with both of those circumstances. In any and any, in every circumstance, Paul says, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance, and need. It should be obvious to us that the all things of verse 13 are limited to what he's talking about here, the being brought low or being able to abound, to be hungry or have plenty, to have abundance or to be in need. Any of those circumstances, he said, in any and every circumstance, uh, whatever situation, he knows that he can do all these things through Christ. Now, of course, Paul's not saying that anything he could ever set his mind to, God will do for him. You know, of course, God is not going to give him the strength to break his own law. God is not going to give him the strength to preach a gospel contrary to the gospel of Jesus. That's not what he's saying. I remember when I was growing up, I had uh, Philippians 4 verse 13 on a a poster and it was a young boy kneeling down in shoulder pads and he had his helmet you know how boys will they'll put the back of their helmet on the ground and they'll hold that face mask and they'll lean on it and they'll be on one knee and it was a passage written there Philippians 4 13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me well is is God really giving us the strength to win a football game or uh you know to to make the right investments I don't necessarily think that's the context the context for Paul was I've learned to have everything I need and I've learned to be in need and I can endure any of those needs because Christ gives me strength. That's the strength seen here, the context of what's being discussed. And so Philippians chapter four, and verse 13, I hope is a passage that uh, is going to give you strength. I want to notice a couple of things out of this passage, Philippians four thirteen, that uh, I hope will encourage you and help you to face tomorrow. Uh, valiantly and courageously. The first one is the very first word in verse 13, I. I want you to notice that Paul makes this passage very personal. It's about him. He has been hungry and he has been full. He has been living in abundance and, and then found himself being in need. A lot of people thought that Paul came from a very wealthy family. He was a, a man that uh, was a part of a, a very prestigious Jewish school. He was taught by a very popular teacher in Gamaliel. Paul was a man who probably came from some family money, and when he turned to the Lord, he probably had to give that up. You see, Paul knew what it was like to be in abundance and to be in need. He knew what it was like to be hungry and to be full. He, he understood both areas of life, and verse 13 is very personal. 
He looks back on his personal experiences and then projects that to the future and says, I was able to endure these things by the power of Christ. And anything similar that shows itself up in the future, I will be able to endure again by the power of Christ. I, it's personal. You see, I is the person that is living today. I am living my life and I have the certain circumstances that I'm living in. And guess what? I am not you and you are not me and you are not him and you are not her. You are not your neighbor. You are not your spouse. You are you. And Philippians 4 and verse 13 could be an easy passage for us to say, you know what? I know you're going through a hard time, but you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And maybe we need to give that encouragement, but I want to share with you that Paul wasn't telling the Philippians that. He was telling them that he felt that way. It's a personal thing in Philippians 4 and verse 13. I, I am the person doing and Paul didn't say we as the church. He didn't say you or they. He said, I can. I think that's powerful. I think we need to remember that. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can endure difficult times. I can, if the Lord wills, make it through the end of this year and ring in the happy new year. I told somebody on the phone the other day, I said, I don't think I'll ever say happy new year any uh, more enthusiastically than I will at the end of this year. If the Lord lets us live that long, you know, if he doesn't come back between now and then I will say happy new year with a vigor. I think I may have never used before. I can do these things. I can endure times of hardship as a Christian. I can endure persecution. I can endure frustrations because I have Christ on my side. I can maybe tonight you need to convince yourself that you can. Maybe you can take that encouragement from this passage. Paul also said the word can here. I can. You know, sometimes we get tied up thinking about what we cannot. We get over interested in the things that we cannot do or the things that we should not do or the things that we are incapable of doing. A lot of times frustration and anxiety comes from a comparison of what can they do and what can I not do. I cannot do what they do. I cannot serve the way they serve. I cannot do evangelism the way they do evangelism. I cannot lead singing the way they lead singing. I cannot encourage people the way they encourage people. I cannot. Yeah, but that was not Paul's ultimate concern here in this passage. His concern was, I can. It was the determination to do. I can make the choice. I want to take your attention to Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your father served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. Listen to this. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Do you hear the determination in Joshua's voice? This is what's going to happen. You see, Paul knew that whatever circumstances laid before him, whether it was him being hungry or full, do you know that whatever circumstances lie ahead of you and I, whether it's that we have abundant blessings where we feel that we are in need, we can endure that because we have everything we need in Christ. It's a determination. And so in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, Paul said, I can encouraging. I hope it encourages you. As we're going word by word, we get to our next one. I can do. Do you know that Christianity is a doing religion? It is a active faith and belief system. Christianity is something that is somewhat of a verb. I do things. Listen to Matthew 7 and verse 21, a familiar passage. Remember, Jesus had just said uh, in previous uh, passages about serving God and, and making sure we understand the law and the heart of the law. And he gets here to this kind of heart of the law in Matthew 7. It's not just about what we say, it's about what we do. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. It is a active thing doing. 
what God asks. And it's James chapter one. You're probably familiar with this. I'm not going to read the whole section, but James chapter one, beginning in verse 19. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every man be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. You know, oftentimes we're quick to say and quick to get frustrated before we open up and listen. Verse 22, be doers of the word and not hearers only. And if we're hearers only, what happens? We fool ourselves. We deceive ourselves. We cannot just be hearers. We have to be doers. Christianity is a religion of action, and we should remember that. I can do and then he says all things, the things that need to be done, everything God wants done in these circumstances. Did you know that us as Christians are not prevented from serving God just because we're in a pandemic? Sure, we got to be more creative in the way we serve God, but we haven't been limited in being able to serve God and being capable of serving him. We might have to get more creative. We might have to do things differently. We might have to spray, uh, you know, um, Lysol and everything that we hand out, but we can still serve God. I can do all things. God wants us to do things, and we can do them in all circumstances. In Paul's circumstance, it was whether he had or he did not have. He could do all things through Christ who strengthened him. And in our circumstances, we have to be in. We have to be can people, not cannot people. He says, I can do all things through Christ or through him, the ESV says. You know, you and I need to remember where the source of our power is in doing. The power is not available to us because of our actions or our thoughts. The power is available to us because God has made it available to us through Christ. You and I can accomplish the things that we want to do for him, the uh, service we want to render to God. We can accomplish it because God supplies power, and that's a that's a lesson I want to flesh out later and maybe another lesson just centered on the power of God, but it's the power of God who gives us strength. You see, I don't know where you find yourself now today. Uh, it's Wednesday. It's uh, about three o'clock in the afternoon and I'm recording this beforehand. Um, it's kind of been a, a rainy day and uh, you know, it's, it's just kind of a typical day in December, but we're getting close to the holidays and, and I'm hopeful for the new year. I don't know where you are today. Maybe you're sitting on your couch at home listening to this. Maybe you're listening to it in the car while you're driving. I don't know. Some of you may be listening to it on your way home from work tonight. Maybe you're sitting around a table with your family or you're in your favorite lazy chair at home. I don't know where you are, but I want you to know that the frustrations and the things that may make us feel as if we are abundantly in need pale in comparison to the strength we can garner from being in Christ. Because in Christ are all spiritual blessings. In Christ is grace and salvation. In Christ is freedom. We're made new creatures. We are made able to produce the fruits of the Spirit to be people. Remember we sing the fruit of the Spirit song? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. We're to be people that are loving and joyful and peaceful. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You see, in Christ, we have the strength and we have the ability to be that because of him. Whatever circumstance, in any and every circumstance, no matter where we are, in every situation, Paul says, in whatever situation, verse 11, in any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret and the secret is God. I can do all things. I can endure the rest of this year. I can make it through whatever faces me, whether that be health, wealth, death, or frustration. I can face it all because Christ gives me strength. I can pass through the doors of life and continue to live. I can pass through the doors of death and meet my Lord. I can do all things. I can endure all things through Christ who strengthens me. I hope that encourages you and gives you a renewed zeal and courage to face the world tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a new day if the Lord allows it to be. The sun will rise. Uh, there's nothing you and I can do to prevent that. There's nothing that anything in this world can do to prevent that. I hope you'll approach tomorrow. I hope I will approach tomorrow and say, just as Paul, I can do all things through Christ 
who strengthens me. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I look forward to seeing you all on Sunday morning. If you're going to be there, if not, I'll see you virtually. I hope you have a great rest of the week.